Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of You and I Builder Bytes. In our last episodes, we introduced the Next Experience Developer Tools Chrome extension and explored the Inspector tab in detail. Today, we're going to focus on the Profiler tab, which is a powerful feature that helps you analyze performance and optimize your pages. Remember, for additional links and resources, check out the article linked here or in the video's description. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and open up the Profiler tab. You do that by pressing F12 or opening up your browser tools and clicking on the Next Experience Profiler tab right there. Once you have it open, you'll notice that it's empty. To start capturing data, you'll either need to trigger an action or interaction on your page or click the reload button to record the page load. The profiler tab is designed to give you detailed insights into how your pages perform. You can analyze and optimize the performance of your pages by using the data this tab collects during a specific period of time, during something like a page load or a refresh. Those events contain useful information about the components and code being executed that can help you identify potential performance bottlenecks. When you first load the tab, the homepage will most likely appear blank. Up top, we see a set of actions we can take, ending with the settings buttons. The settings are all pretty standard, but I wanted to point out that the enable usage tracking setting is the same as the one in the inspector tab. So if you deactivate one, it will deactivate both. Overall, no personal information is collected as part of this process. Also, good to note, by default, the tool captures a set of pre-selected events for profiling, but if you want to capture all events, just enable the option in this menu. So let's go ahead and start recording and do a refresh so we can get some data in here. When we record data, we create a profile, which you're going to be able to see in the dropdown here shortly. This is now the profile detail view. Here you can see the profile that we had created when we loaded our page. We've got comprehensive information about the currently selected profile. We've got detailed information on the page's execution characteristics and events fired, and it's gonna help us analyze the performance and help us optimize the page. When at least one profile is recorded or loaded, we see the timeline, we see the flame graph, and we see the detail tabs at the bottom. Let's start with the timeline view. This captures and displays the sequence of actions and events on your page, complete with durations and dependencies. It lets you pinpoint slow operations at a glance. You can zoom in and out to focus on specific time ranges and interactions. You can either zoom in and out by using the sliders like this. You can select different time frames, or you can zoom in and out using the zoom buttons in the top right corner. You can also choose to filter, whether you specify the range aspects or use one of the available presets. We have more information on what each preset specifically filters for in the documentation. Flame graphs visually represent the call hierarchy and execution flow of the page. They can provide a comprehensive view of the functions and scripts involved in rendering the web page, which allows you to identify the performance bottlenecks affecting your page. Now let's look at the details tabs, starting with the summary tab. This provides a visual representation of event ratios in the form of a pie chart with an interactive legend that allows you to hide or show specific types of events. When the timeline up above is filtered, the pie chart's data is adjusted accordingly. The events tab displays a table of all events within the selected range each row down here is an event, and all columns, except for the details columns, are sortable. Again, you can find more information on what each column is and what event types are being collected in the documentation provided in the article. The table can be viewed in one of two different ways by going up to the View dropdown. The All view displays all of the events as they are captured, and the component aggregate view groups the events per component tags and gives the count for each event type that happened for a component tag. Something important to note about the event timestamp attached to events is that for security reasons, the precision of that timestamp has been reduced by the browser up to a millisecond. 
We've determined that for most use cases, this is not a significant difference in troubleshooting, but if you need to increase precision of the timestamps returned to the browser, we have a specific system property that you can configure listed in the docs linked in the article. Next, we've got the profile metadata tab, and this just shows additional data associated with the selected profile. This is just useful information to have. Next is the performance counters tab. Going back to the settings, one of the settings up here is capture all performance counters. When this is enabled, the performance counters tab will list different kinds of counters captured during the current recording. These can include things like the API methods timing histogram or page DOM element counters. Now let's go ahead and check out the compare view. The compare view is used to compare and highlight the differences between two profiles. The first profile, known as the baseline, is typically a profile that we compare against. It's usually a profile of the last family release or a profile we captured prior to implementing a new feature. The second profile, called the target, is the more recent profile we want to ensure performs as well as the baseline. We launch comparison mode by clicking the compare button in the action header, which opens a profile selection modal where you can pick your baseline and target profiles. You can either select ones available to you here or import files stored on a hard drive. Once they're both selected, click the compare button and you will see the profile comparison. The comparison view consists of two panels, the metadata panel on the left and the comparison details panel on the right. The metadata panel presents the stored metadata for each profile, which lets you quickly check for similarities and differences between profiles environments. The comparison panel provides an overview of metrics, including the overall difference, as well as the differences for five specific events listed up here. The table below the metrics section shows detailed information for all tag names. Each cell represents the difference for a specific component and event, with the baseline number being on the left and having the target number subtracted from it. A positive number indicates degraded performance, while negative numbers indicate an improvement. If you click on a particular row, it will expand and show you the absolute numbers for the corresponding component and events. You can choose to expand all of the rows by clicking on the arrows buttons on the top right corner. You can also choose to select to view only non-zero rows from the dropdown, which lets you filter out every metric that is the same for both profiles. And that way it becomes easier to focus only on the differences. By combining all of these features, the Profiler tab becomes a comprehensive tool for optimizing and debugging your ServiceNow pages. And that's it for this episode. You'll never be able to guess how many times I had to re-record me saying metadata. Today, we explored the Profiler tab in the Next Experience Developer Tools Chrome extension. You now know how to capture and analyze performance data, isolate bottlenecks, and optimize your pages for better user experiences. Thanks for watching. Check out the article for resources and step-by-step -step instructions. And don't forget to try this out on your own ServiceNow instance. Like and share for more episodes of UNI Builder Bytes. See you next time.